What's up guys, welcome to the video, good morning. Today we're gonna to answer your questions that you asked me in the previous video about the British Army. I'm just out having a run now, so I'm gonna find a suitable place to sit down, answer your questions, and hopefully give you guys a little bit of clarity on anything that you've been having questions about. Let's get into the video. So guys, just before we get started then, if you do end up liking this video, then please hit the like button and possibly subscribe if you do like my content. If you've got any more questions after this video, guys, just drop them in the comment section down below. And if there's enough people getting involved, then I will do another video based on this because I want to answer your guys' questions as much as I possibly can because I know it is a bit of a struggle going through this process. And I'm sure you've all got a lot of questions that you need answering. Okay, so first question from Easy Custom about Commonwealth applications. I believe the reason that your application has probably not been pushed further is because unfortunately Commonwealth applications have been put on hold due to the massive amount of recruitment that's been going on within the British Army. They've hit the numbers already that they needed for this year and I don't know if you are aware that they have lowered them numbers so they're finding that they've just got too many people in the pipeline at the moment so the thing that they've done to stop that is they've put the Commonwealth applications on hold. I'm not sure when this is till and um, hopefully it doesn't last too much longer. Um, I've kind of heard some people saying that the recruitment numbers may go back up next year, um, but that's not 100%. Um, so all you've got to do is just keep on looking at the website, keep on speaking to your candidate manager and keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully they change us very soon because we need you guys. So the next question is from Robin Walker asking about Harrogate entry for junior soldiers and how long it is. Well, it depends on the job role that you're going for. If you're going for a technical trade like the Royal Engineers, Royal Electrical Mechanical Engineers, then it is only six months because you have a longer phase two training where you would learn how to be an engineer if you're going something like royal artillery infantry it is normally a one year course so you would spend 12 months there which is quite a long period of time and then when you get straight out of that you would do your phase two training but eventually you will line up with the people that are technical trades so their their phase two is longer your phase one is longer um, and your phase two is a little bit shorter so you're pretty much in and out of phase two whereas the people that are going technical trades have a lot of work to do for um academic qualifications and things like that um fitness tips to get ready for infantry um at the assessment center a lot of running i would say it's it's not the hardest thing to do in the world for um a junior entry soldier i think you only have to get 7.5 off the top of my head so just keep on working on some of my previous tips from the videos that i've made in the past i'll try and put them on the screen now go out get your running in three runs a week make sure you're pushing yourself on at least one of them runs the other two maybe take it nice and easy um and by pushing yourself i mean going quite fast um either do your 2k do a bleep test whatever it may be and then the other two days take it nice and easy get used to running um and feeling good when you're running things like that hope that answers your question this next one's about buying property in the uk um, i'm assuming by this noel um that you are asking about buying a house or something like that when you move to the uk as a commonwealth citizen um I, i'm going to be brutally honest i really don't know the normal way you would go about it um the way i went about it is you would go to the bank after you've saved enough money to put down as a deposit and then you would apply for a mortgage and then from that they'll make a decision on your credit rating um i'm not sure how it works if you are not a uk citizen unfortunately but if you are in the british army i'm guessing that will give you um some profs and it will help you along the way the best thing to do is just to go onto a website like nationwide natwest any of the uk banks um and inquire that way either send them an email or give them a phone call and just sort of feel it out and see um see what they say about it that's all that's all you can do okay next question from toby west really good question actually about what is day-to-day -day life like in the military now this is obviously um relevant to whichever job role you do so different job roles will do this slightly different but i'll just run through the week um as it used to be in my old regiment so on a monday we'd have a late start at about half past 10 we'd go into work after that um and maybe do some low level training or some maintenance and cleaning go on lunch and then you come back and you probably just do the same thing either some low level training maintenance and cleaning and you would finish pretty early tuesday morning you'd start at eight o'clock do pt back down to uh, work, do a bit of maintenance and cleaning again or some low level training, lunch, and then the same thing in the afternoon. Wednesday, low level training or maintenance all morning from eight till 12, then you would have a full sports afternoon to do whatever sports you want. Thursday is exactly the same as Tuesday, so PT in the morning, followed by maintenance and cleaning, low level training, and then lunch, and then exactly the same. And then Friday, 
um, Friday COs PT. So you'd normally go down to work or you'd go straight onto PT um, and then you'd finish by 12 o'clock. Um, and that just depends. Um, when you're in camp and stuff like that, it's very, very laid back. Um, and sometimes there's not a lot to do, to be honest. Um, so you can cut away quite early um, and get a bit of time to yourself. Um, when you're on exercise and obviously operations, that's when things get a little bit more stressful and you get limited time to yourself. Like when you're on exercise, you'd be expected to work about 16, 17, 18 hours a day um, and be working through the night quite a lot. That's where you sort of earn your money um, and you can be on exercise for up to six, eight weeks. So most of the time they're about two weeks long, three weeks long, but you can go for obviously six month periods and stuff like that. Um, and that is where you earn your money. Next question from Neil about, can they fail you if you don't pass the swim test? The answer is no. Um, it doesn't matter if you can swim or not. Uh, it's just a sort of, give you a guide and give them a guide where you are. Normally, if you fail the swim test in training, um, they'll just make you go to swimming lessons and stuff like that when you get your regiment. And you don't, I don't even think you actually have to do that. It's not like a pass or fail component of phase one training. So do not worry about not being able to swim. Um, they'll ask you if you can swim. And if you say no, then they'll put you right next to the side and they'll either coach you or they might leave you out if you're struggling. So don't worry about that at all, mate. Um, there's quite a few people that can't swim in the military. Yeah, next yeah. one, next one. Um, this is quite a good one, actually. What job role did you do in the Royal Artillery and what is my opinion on the Royal Artillery since I have left? Um, so I was a light gunner, so I worked on the L118 light gun um, and I was in 7 RHA. Um, so my job role was 2IC of, of the gun um, and then obviously you have a section commander who's in charge of the gun. Um, so my job role is to prepare ammunition and sort of be 2IC of the troops. But um, yeah, uh, my opinion on the artillery, um, I kind of wish I never went in it, um, and that's not to deter you any, in any way, shape or form. It's just because I wish I did some sort of engineering role because I had the qualifications, but um, I didn't end up doing it for some for some strange reason. Um, and when you left, this is actually going to roll on to another question that we've got later on. Um, you don't really get any qualifications from the Royal Artillery, except from your leadership sort of courses and stuff like that, as you do for part of your promotion. So I don't regret it, it was good. I enjoyed my time there, um, but I wish I did experience another job role. Um, instead of leaving, maybe transferred to engineers or medics or something like that and got a technical trade so that when I left the army, I had a lot more to fall back on because I, I may speak about this in a, in a future video to give you guys some advice, but um, when I left the army, I did it very quickly um, and I didn't really um, concentrate on the things that I should have concentrated on as much as I should have. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that answers your question. The Royal Artillery is a good job role. It was very, very good. It's very fast pace. Obviously, you can get you can get um, up close and personal with combat because it is a combat role um, and it is very quick promotion in it and there's plenty of job roles within the Royal Artillery. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers. So the next question then, um, would smoking tobacco necessarily sort of stop your application? I think is what you're trying to ask there. Um, the answer is no. Um, loads of people in the army obviously smoke and a lot of people that go through the process smoke but what I will say is obviously it's not healthy we all know that we're not stupid um, so maybe try and slow it down a bit you can only benefit from from slowing smoking down a little bit and by slowing it down I mean stopping um, and maybe having less throughout the day um, your fitness will only get better um, and obviously your lung capacity and stuff like that is only going to get better if you stop smoking but the answer is no it's not going to stop your application but maybe have a good think about it the next part of your question was about giving advice for someone young going through the process. Um, advice, the best advice I can give you is keep being proactive with your application, making sure you are giving the candidate man managers what they need um, at the right time. So make sure you're being very proactive. When you get to the medical stage, make sure you're going to that doctor as soon as possible and telling them that you need to get your medical stuff signed as quick as possible because you want to get into the military as quick as possible. In terms of fitness and stuff like that, I've spoke about this on many occasions. Make sure that you're doing at least three PT sessions a week. Everyone can get a PT session in throughout the day. There's there's no excuse to not have any time really. It's six o'clock in the morning now and I'm out doing a little bit of a run and filming this video. Everyone has got time. You've just got to make it a priority. Um, in terms of GCSEs and stuff like that, if you're someone um, that is going for a technical trade, then definitely keep on top of your GCSEs, especially maths. Um, make sure that you're keeping up to date with how to solve problems and all that sort of stuff because you will have to do a technical selection test. Um, if you don't want to go a technical trade, still still get them GCSEs because I promise you, you will need them later on in life, which I found out. Um, I did have my maths, but I didn't have English and I had to do it at 25 years old um, so I could actually get jobs and stuff. So a bit of advice, just get them done while you're young and then you've got them for life. Hope that answers your question. Thanks. So the next question is, is the psychometric test hard? Um, well, it's pretty difficult to ask that, answer that question, to be honest. Um, 
it's going to be hard for some people it's going to be easy for other people it just depends how clever you are to be honest um what i would say is do a little bit of revision um and have a good think about when you're answering the questions because they're there to get you thinking um, and make sure you're reasoning things properly and stuff like that so if you need to do a few practices you can buy books and stuff like that um then just do that but i wouldn't worry about it too much it's not as difficult as the navy one um, but it is still a little bit challenging. Obviously, the lower the score you get, the less job roles you have available. If you're going for something like intelligence course, something like that, you need to get a very good score. So you may want to do a little bit of revision, speak to your candidate manager, and ask them to send you a test, a test through or something like that, so they can, so that you can have a good uh, try at it before you go up to the army assessment centre. Hope that answers your question. Well, the next question then, very good question about the Army Commandos and the Royal Marine Commandos. What is the difference between them? Not many people actually know that there is Army Commandos as well, and they are slightly different to the Royal Marine Commandos. The Royal Marine Commandos are the real deal. They are the bread and butter. They are the, the big dogs. Um, the Army Commandos are basically technical trades that support the Royal Marine Commandos um, in operations and stuff like that. So if you look at the Royal Marines as like an infantry sort of um, organization, they do have different job roles within, within the Royal Marines, but there's some things that they cannot do themselves like artillery. So you have two nine commando um, and you'll have other commando units that support them when they go on operations um, and amphibious warfare and stuff like that. So the Royal Marines have loads of job roles within the actual Royal Marines. They're not just like frontline soldiers. They do have other um, job roles, but there is some things that they cannot do themselves. Um, so obviously they need support from the army. And with that, the army have to do the army commando course. I'm not sure how different the army commando course is from the Royal Marines one. I'm guessing it's pretty similar to um, All Arms P Company and actual P Company that Parachute Regiment do. Probably very, very similar. Um, however, you won't be looked at as a proper commando, as an army commando, just like I was never looked at as a proper para because I didn't do, um, didn't go through parachute depot, but I did do uh, P Company. So um, just look at it like that. If you want to go army commando, it's still a good trait to have. Um, and you obviously may be able to get a trade out of it that you wouldn't be able to get in the Royal Marine Commandos. So next question then, do you have full accommodation in the army? Do you have to pay bills? Yes, you get full accommodation. Nowadays, everybody has pretty much like a travel lodge hotel room. It's called um, Z type accommodation, I think off the top of my head. And that means that you've got a double bed in your room. You have got like loads of cabinets and stuff like that. And then you have an ensuite shower and toilet and stuff. Uh, and the only bill you will pay for that is rent. And it's not expensive at all. It's like maybe not even a hundred pound a month. I think it's like 80 pound a month and you get a free room with a toilet, bath, shower. It's like it's like having a hotel room to yourself and they have internet in them and everything like that. So you can hook your computers up, your Xbox, TVs, anything like that. And you've got all that personal space to yourself, um, but you just have to make sure you keep it tidy. You still do have room inspections, unfortunately, when you are a fully trained soldier. They're not as regular, but you do get your room inspected. So you gotta make sure you're not a grot and you look after yourself and uh, clean up and clean your toilet and all that. Okay, stuff. the next question is from Enzox about the two kilometer run. He's asking, is it 11 minutes 30 or 11 minutes? Um, to be honest, I believe it's 11.15 as of my sheet. Um, it just depends what job role you're going into. Um, I'm guessing you're going the artillery because you've asked about the Ace 90 Gunner. Um, and I'm sure, I'm very, very sure, 100% sure, 99%, um, that it is 11 minutes 15. Um, so maybe check that up with your candidate manager. Um, fail on that when I get into work next week. Um, not next week, the week after, sorry. I can, when I do another video or check back on my other videos um, from the fitness assessment, I've put a picture up of all the entry requirements for the different job roles um, and you'll see the answer on there. It's 99% it's sure it's 11 minutes 15. Moving on to the next part of the question, is it on flat service? Yes, when you go to Glencourse, um, if you are living in the North region, it is on a very flat surface. I think Purbrights is on a flat surface as well and I'm 99% I'm sure Litchfields will be on a flat surface because they want to give you the best chance they possibly can to pass so don't worry about that if it has got any heels in it at all it'll literally be a short short incline um so just don't worry about that at all um and the final bit of your question can you get a trade as an as 90 gunner the answer is no unfortunately um you will get a, a trade qualification but it will be a military style qualification so when you go on your level two level three guns course um when you get into your regiment you will go to train to be uh, to do gunnery um, and you will get a qualification from that. That qualification is only relevant in the military. So when you leave, you won't be able to use that to do anything just like what I did. So I only came out of the army with leadership qualifications from doing my promotion. I didn't get any trades or anything from being on the guns. So um, that's one of the downfalls, unfortunately. So is there any roles in the Royal Signals that will see combat? The answer is possibly. Um, 
you may have the opportunity to be embedded within infantry platoons and things of that nature and be like a comm specialist but most of the time infantry, infantry platoons have people that are already trained up to be on the net and speak through radios um, the royal signals normally are there at the start of the battle yeah setting up comms posts and masts and stuff like that so everyone has communication um, before they actually get there um, so that's their role and obviously uh, cyber warfare and things of that nature um, but this may be something you might want to have a, do a little bit more research on because um, I'm not 100% sure I wasn't in the Royal Signals so definitely check that one out on the on the Army website and maybe speak to your candidate manager so another question about the Royal Signals then you're applying as an officer and you want to know if you've got access to the qualifications that the soldiers have now I'm not 100% sure on this but the way it normally works is you will get higher qualifications than what they will you'll obviously get qualifications in leadership management but at the same time you will have to oversee what the soldiers are doing so you will have to have higher comms qualifications or signal qualifications whatever they are than the people that are operating them so um you may have access you can always volunteer the army will always ask people to volunteer and if you've got time to do it as an officer you'll definitely be able to go on these courses and and do these qualifications if you so wish you just have to sort of ask the question really um and then hopefully you get the green okay, light. final two questions then what sort of questions do they ask you on the medical exam now you have to be very careful about what you say on the medical exam I've said this in a previous video previous video because if you say something that is a bit alarming to them then they can stop you in your tracks right there and your, your application could be pretty much over um, you have to you can obviously can appeal but um, you have to be very careful so they'll ask you things like have you had any problems with mental health issues or anything in the past have you ever um, had any problems with your knees just basic questions to get an overall picture of your health I'm not sure on the exact exact questions um, but they'll just ask you different little questions to try and find out your overall health if you've had any issues in the past and they just want to get an overall battle picture of of what sort of state your body is in are you ready to go into phase one training or have you had some problems in the past that are going to arise when you are in basic training so my my advice to you is just to be very very careful what you say um because if you say something that is going to trigger them to defer you then it can really harm the application and it can obviously harm you as a person as well because it can push you back quite a lot and it's quite disheartening when you get sent away from selection with without that pass so just be careful what you say um but i'm sure you will be all okay right. so Bloody tractor. Go ahead, go. Okay, last and final question, guys. Um, what is the best role as a soldier and an officer in 2021? Obviously, there's no conflict at the moment, so no one's going on operations. We're pulling out of Afghanistan. All them sorts of things are not going on at the moment. So what's the best qualifications? What's the best trade? What is the best job role? Now, this is obviously going to be relevant to you guys. Um, obviously, pick the job role that you find the most interesting. If it was me going through it again, um, and I had the qualifications I've got now, I would have joined as an officer um, and I would have went into probably either engineering, Royal Engineers, or Royal Electrical Mechanical Engineers and I would have got some sort of trade to fall back on um, and I would have done the exact same thing if I was joining as a soldier as well. Um, what I realised when I left the army there was that I literally had no qualifications to fall back on at all um, and due to the nature of how I left the army, I sort of screwed myself over. So um, the answer is, it's relevant to you. Um, if you want to go paras, do that. If you want to go um, infantry, do that. If you want to go engineers, do that. It doesn't It doesn't really matter as long as you enjoy what you're doing. But um, if you are someone that is thinking about leaving the army maybe after a couple of years and you want to do something else on civilian street, then I'd have a serious think about the trades and the courses um, that you are going to get from your job role to make your life a little bit easier um, when you leave. Um, apart from that, um, I hope that answers your question. So guys, that is the end of Q&A number one. Thank you very much for that. I, uh, I really enjoyed it, actually. That's probably the first time I've ever done a Q&A. Well, it, it definitely was the first time I've ever done a Q&A, um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I just want to thank you all so much for your support. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for commenting on them and asking me questions. I'm glad I can be of help, um, if I am, <laughs> to any of you. Uh, like I said before at the start of the video, if you do have any more questions, guys, just put them down below. Um, and if I get enough people coming with questions again, um, then I will make another video. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this one and hopefully there was a bit of information for everyone in this because I'm guessing some of these questions were definitely relevant to all of you so you've all probably got these questions in your head and you're all probably thinking um, the same things because um, it's a bit of a worrying time going through the application process the recruitment process all them sorts of things I'd go up to the assessment centre so if I can be a help in any way then definitely just drop me a comment and I will do my best to answer it once again if you did like it definitely hit it with a like 
and possibly subscribe. I appreciate all of your time. Catch you later.